to talk about what you just saw. Awesome, lethal, but something that can be understood, and that understanding can save lives. If the U.S. is ever attacked, it is likely that nuclear weapons will be used. Hence, we need to know characteristics and effects of nuclear weapons. All nuclear explosions instantaneously release great amounts of energy. That energy is in several forms, thermal or heat, light, blast, and radiation. The energy is released both immediately and after the fact, and finally, in some cases, in an intense electromagnetic pulse. The relative importance of these different forms of energy release, and in turn, the effects they produce, depend upon many things. As you might guess, the location of the burst is critical, both in the sense of how far away from you it is, and how high above the Earth's surface it is. Electromagnetic pulse, EMP, a big scientific sounding phrase, but fairly easy to understand. It's only serious for nuclear explosions that occur high above the Earth. These explosions, instead of spending their energy in blast and heat, produce enormous quantities of electrical charge. The resulting great outpouring of charge over hundreds of thousands of square miles in the upper atmosphere can cause large electrical voltages to appear on metallic objects on or near the ground. Generally, the larger or longer the object, the higher the voltage it collects. Antennas, wiring, fences are especially good collectors. For a high altitude burst over Omaha, the hazard from EMP would cover a huge circle through Dallas and beyond Chicago. If a nuclear burst occurred as high as 124 miles above the center of the United States, it would result in an electromagnetic pulse affecting the entire continental United States and extending far into Canada, Mexico, and out to sea. These voltages can burn out lights, and ruin TVs, radios, and other electronic equipment, which could be critically useful in an emergency. So the answer for the individual to protection from EMP is to disconnect all electrical service and outdoor antennas at the devices to be protected. Then listen for guidance on a battery operated radio. Above all, be aware that just because communication systems such as radio and telephone may go silent for a time after an attack, it does not mean everything and everyone has been destroyed it is more likely that EMP has disabled the transmitting equipment and time will be required to repair it. Meantime, you may be out of touch for a while and will have to make decisions based on what you know. Giving you adequate background with which to function is the purpose of this film. From megaton size explosions can reach out many miles, 10 to 30 miles or more. Even if you cannot get to shelter before the detonation, you should instantly hide behind any solid object a wall, a tree, in a ditch. Any place where the hot light cannot directly hit you. But you must be very fast. You'll have only five to 10 seconds. That's not much time. And the difference between hiding and not hiding can be a mild burn versus death. So get behind something quickly. You must also be alert to danger from the fires that the bomb's heat may start near you. Quickly extinguish these fires, if possible, or seek alternate shelter. As the fireball expands due to its high temperature, it rapidly compresses the air in its path and creates a blast wave. The blast wave is another way a large nuclear explosion can kill. Common sense tells you that the stronger the shield, the better your chances. The reach of the blast will produce structural damage out to 10 miles or more and total destruction out to almost five miles. With any warning time, it is possible to get some personal protection against the blast. Ideally, inside strong buildings or in residential basements. In some cases, your chances of survival are improved. Heat and blast are easy to understand. Radiation is unique to nuclear detonations. Compared to heat and blast, 
initial radiation effects, those produced at the instant of the explosion and for up to a minute afterward, are usually not very significant. Fallout radiation effects, however, can be very deadly over a wide area. The most important fact about radiation effects from fallout is that to a considerable extent they can be minimized or in some cases avoided completely. Precisely for these reasons, namely that fallout affects huge areas compared to blast and heat and furthermore is something that can be effectively combated, we will focus our attention primarily on dealing with it. The amount of energy generated by a nuclear explosion is enormous. Near the crater area, there is almost total destruction from blast and heat. And now large amounts of pulverized debris and molten earth are pulled up into the mushroom cloud. This is where radioactive fallout is formed. The radioactive atoms produced in the explosion join with the particles of earth and debris. The mushroom-shaped cloud forms and climbs higher. It now contains billions of highly radioactive particles of matter that we call fallout. The strong winds of the upper altitudes go to work on the cloud, blowing it off in one or more directions. Gravity tugs on the particles. The larger and heavier ones sink toward the ground, while the lighter particles continue to drift with the wind. Some of the lightest particles remain suspended in the upper atmosphere. As time passes, their radioactivity grows weaker, so that the longer they remain aloft, the less dangerous they are. But the heavier particles, spread by high altitude winds, fall to the ground within 24 hours. Several miles from the explosion, they are about the size of table salt or fine sand. These are the most dangerous because they carry the greatest number of radioactive atoms and so emit the largest amount of nuclear radiation. Which brings us to an all-important fact. Deadly as radiation can be, it has a fortunate weakness, a rapid rate of decay. And this gives us an invaluable ally, time. Suppose a nuclear explosion takes place at 12 noon. By one o'clock, the total force of the residual radiation is at a high level. By seven o'clock, it's down to one-tenth. In two days, although still dangerous, it's only one one-hundred. But in two weeks, it's only one one-thousand. With this decay rate in mind, consider radioactive fallout conditions which might confront us after a massive attack. Within an hour, fallout would be a serious problem in the vicinity of explosions which occur on or near the ground. By seven hours after the attack, the fallout area covers more and more of the country as the prevailing winds expand the fallout in a downwind pattern. 24 hours. 48 hours. Without shelter, millions would face death. A few days later, those who have taken shelter will survive. In many areas, people can even leave shelter for brief periods of time to carry out important tasks. Within two weeks, most people can leave their shelters for longer periods as the radioactivity decays to lower levels. The lesson is obvious. We must shield ourselves from radiation through the dangerous period. Well, we've covered a good many topics in this presentation. In other presentations, we'll discuss many crucial topics related to fallout, its measurement, its effects on people, defenses against it, and so on. <laughs>